So if you've been using modern UI in your SharePoint Listen libraries and you find that the forms and the data capture and the data entry isn't quite what you need for your end users, maybe you've thought about in the past we used to use InfoPath, but what do I do now? Today I want to talk about how Power Apps can be used to enhance that data capture for your end users. So SharePoint has come a long way in the recent years when it comes to lists and libraries and metadata and managing that metadata, allowing users to enter that information. Uh, it used to be that we were stuck with InfoPath or customized uh, ASPX forms using SharePoint Designer. Uh, now with modern UI and SharePoint Online, we have a much better ability to make that user experience better for our end users using lists and libraries. But today we're gonna dive into how we can actually use Power Apps to make it even better than that. So what we're gonna get into next is we're gonna take a look at an out of the box or slightly customized SharePoint list and what it looks like to actually create a custom form for that list. So as we're diving in here, I, I imagine some of you may have noticed I changed my shirt. Uh, make no bones about it, I'm diving into this demo, it's real work, so I had to put my work clothes on. So we're gonna dive right in here and in this case we have uh, some demo data, we've got a content scheduler list, I've done a little bit of customization to it, um, but if we look at this list, um, if we take a look at this list and like the new form, for example, this is the out of the box or default uh, info panel that you get with uh, SharePoint Lister Library. Um, and this is nice, it lets you enter data and it's certainly much more responsive and mobile friendly and things like that than SharePoint used to be. Um, but there, are, as we talked about, always scenarios where you could make this better or you need to make it better, um, where you might need to add features like specific validation in, the, in a uh, scenario where a field is set to a certain value, uh, or maybe you wanna make it a little bit nicer for data entry for your end users. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you how we're gonna do that with Power Apps. So to do that customization, we're gonna uh, use our Power Apps menu on our list. Um, this menu will also be available for document libraries. Um, but you can come in here and you can click on Customize Forms. And this is going to load up basically a, a view or a, uh, that form, if you will, in Power Apps as kind of a default version of it. It'll have uh, very minimal data on it to start with. Um, but you can pretty easily modify that to suit your needs. But basically this loaded up basically a default version of my form. It's got my title on it. It's uh, set for a mobile profile, so it's kind of got that layout. Um, we're using this primarily on a desktop or a tablet, so I'm gonna change that a little bit. Um, and so to do that, uh, first things first, we're gonna jump over to the settings of this particular Power App. Um, and if we uh, go to the screen size and orientation settings, we have an option here to set the, our orientation and our size. In this case, I'm gonna set it to a custom size. Uh, and I simply want it to be a bit wider than it is. Um, and we'll keep our same height. Um, and we're gonna apply these settings. Uh, one thing to note, is that when you apply those settings, um, if you have already laid out content on your form uh, and it's just how you like it, every time you come back and you feel like you need to change that screen size or that orientation, it's gonna rearrange all of that content back to square one. Um, so you wanna kind of minimize the amount of times that you need to do that, um, if at all possible. So we're gonna go back to our form now and we'll see that we've got a larger form than we had before. Um, we'll expand our form within the screen uh, to fill that full screen and we still just have our title. Uh, so the next thing that we wanna do here is uh, we'll quickly just add a little splash of color to this screen um, to make it a little bit nicer for the end user. So I'm gonna grab my uh, fill color that I want and we're gonna plug that in uh, using advanced because I wanna set a bit of opacity on it. So we'll look for our fill. I'll set that, and so now we've got a slightly prettier screen. Um, it'll help the field stand out on the form a little bit better for the end user in any event. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna actually add the other columns or fields that we care about to this form. Um, so in this case, we're gonna select our form. So I've got SharePoint Form 1 selected. If we come over here and edit fields, um, we have the option to add fields to this form. So the fields, some of the fields that I wanna add are gonna be things like attachments, um, we're gonna go ahead and add the description, uh, a due date. Uh, I think there's a status down here somewhere. So there's our status, and then I think there's also a content type that we care about. So we're gonna go ahead and add those. 
and it's going to automatically just arrange them in whatever order um, they were in. And so if we want to change that order, we can do that uh, relatively easily by simply uh, dragging those things on the form. So I want my attachments to be at the end, for example. I'll put my due date next to my title, um, and we'll move our status and content type up above description. Um, and now the next thing that I want to do is focus on kind of the layout of this form and make it maybe a bit nicer for the user uh, so that it flows a little bit better. And so to do that, um, we're going to go to the form properties itself. So I've still got my form selected and we can choose the number of columns we want to have here. And what this basically does is it gives you some kind of flex ability uh, in your form layout so that you can have various fields take up one or more columns. Um, so I'm gonna flip it all the way to a 12 column uh, layout. And you'll see right away it shrunk everything to use uh, basically uh, uh, three columns. Um, and so now, if I want my title to take up this portion of the top and my uh, due date to take up this portion, I can simply do that by dragging those, those field widths. Um, so I can have my status and my content type kind of share space on my second row. I'll shrink these up. If I want my description to take the full width, I can do that. Um, and in this case, I'm gonna make an additional adjustment to our description. So and this is a scenario where the user is gonna enter a lot of content or a lot of text. Uh, we wanna give them uh, more than a single line to enter that text on or to view. Uh, so I'm gonna flip this to a multi-line field for that particular control and we'll drag this and make it a little bit bigger for the end user. Uh, and then last but not least, we'll have our attachments take up our full width uh, of our form. And so there we've got our first form laid out um, and in a way that hopefully flows better for the user and lets them um, enter that content. Now, in this particular case, I've got an additional piece of content that is the actual article content or the blog post content um, that I want the user to be able to enter and I want them to be able to enter that in a rich text field. And I recognize that that might be a lot of content and so I want it to take up the full, uh, full screen, if you will. Um, and so to support that, I'm gonna add an additional screen to this particular uh, Power App form. So to do that, we're gonna go to our form screen one over here and we're simply gonna say, duplicate the screen. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna create basically a, a copy of what I just created, looks exact, exactly the same. And we're gonna make some adjustments to this. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna rename this form so that it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, so I'm gonna call it our content screen. Then the next thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna change our, the name of this form so that it's SharePoint Form 2. It's just a little bit better naming than SharePoint Form 1 underscore 1, right? Okay, so now that we've got that, um, you'll notice it automatically just rearranged all the stuff on my form. So similar to uh, changing that uh, screen size, um, that basically did the same thing for me. But no matter, in this case, we're gonna remove all of these elements from the form anyway. And so to do that, I'm gonna select SharePoint Form 2. We're gonna to choose to edit the fields and we're simply gonna come over here and remove all of these fields. Okay, so now that we have a blank slate, we're ready to add that article content field uh, to this form. And so to do that, we're gonna go find it here. There's our article content and we're gonna add it. And in this case, um, we know that this is going to be a rich text field, so we want to pay attention to the control type that's being selected here. So you have a variety of options. Uh, in this particular case, I'm looking for my edit rich text. And so I'll flip it to that content type. And then that should automatically give me a much nicer control uh, for blog post or article content. So we'll make that a little bit bigger. And so now the user has you know, almost like looking at a Word document, right? Uh, they can enter content, make it bold, add hyperlinks, all of those types of things uh, within the screen. So now you might ask, well, how does the user get to that screen? How do we navigate back and forth between those two things? Uh, so to do that, uh, we're gonna use something that's pretty simple. We're gonna add an icon or a button to this particular screen. Um, and so we're gonna come over here to our insert panel and we're gonna look for our icon. So in this particular case, it wants me to unlock the data card that we're on, so we'll go ahead and do that. Um, and we're gonna add that icon here. And so it, by default, it's using the add icon. We're gonna flip that to use a back button. So we wanna go back to the main form uh, from this form. And then 
<clears throat> the next thing we need to do is we need to actually wire that button up. So to do that, uh, it's pretty simple. We're simply gonna go to uh, select that icon. And then by default, the on select method is selected up here on the left-hand side. And we can simply come here and tell it to navigate to form screen one, like so. And so now if we put this into run mode and we actually click on that, voila, it took us back to our original form. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna do the same thing for this uh, screen. We wanna be able to navigate to the content screen from this one. Um, so we're gonna add another icon in this case. Uh, so I'll select my form and add an icon and we'll place it at the upper right hand corner. So we have some consistency there. And then in this case, instead of add, we're gonna look for document with content. Uh, so that'll be kind of an indicator to the user that if they wanna enter the content, they can click that icon. And now we're simply gonna, in the on select of this, navigate to our content screen. Just like that. Okay, so now let's try this out. We go ahead and click on that. It takes us to our content screen and back. So that works as expected. So let's say um, that's an interesting scenario. It makes it nicer for the user to enter content in a kind of a long format um, with some formatting. But what if we have a special scenario where um, in the case that this particular um, content uh, piece is scheduled, um, and it's been assigned. And so if it's been assigned, we wanna make sure that it has a description. Um, and so that's a special validation case where we would say, well, I wanna require this description field to be populated in the scenario that our status um, is set to assigned, or for that matter, maybe if it's, you know, draft needs approval, ready to publish or published, right? We should make sure that we have that description present. So to do that, um, we're simply going to uh, focus on our description field and we're gonna make this um, particular field required. Um, so right now out of the box, uh, this field, if we select our required property is, is set to false. We simply wanna toggle this based on a value in our status field. So first things first, we need to unlock this data card. Um, so in order to make changes to this, for example, it's gonna, it wants us to unlock it. And so we'll go ahead and do that here. And now we can make that change. Um, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna understand what the name of this particular control is, where my status is. Um, and so I've selected it. Um, and if you look over here, this is an easy way to find it. It's data card value four. Um, so now if we go back to our, our description data card and our required property, we can do something like this. We can say if data card value four selected value equals assigned, then it's required, else it's not. Um, so we can do something simple like that to make it required in that particular scenario. Um, and so then right away in this, in this mode, you can see I've got the little star next to my description um, because we're set to assigned. If we put this into run mode um, and I flip it back to planned, it's no longer required. Okay, so now that we've got our form laid out the way that we want it, we've got one last thing to do, and that is we need to pay attention to how these forms behave when the user enters certain states. So whether they're in the new mode or edit mode or they're saving the form, um, we need to do something in those particular scenarios. Um, so to do that, we're gonna come over here on our left-hand side in our tree view, and you'll note that you have something here called SharePoint integration. This SharePoint integration uh, element or component is the thing that connects the form to our data. Um, and so it does things like manage um, validation for you, manages saving the content, uh, and things like that. And on this particular component, you're gonna have a number of events that we can manage. And these are on cancel, on edit, on new, on save, and on view. And so in these particular scenarios, what we wanna do is look at what they're already doing. So in this case, out of the box, by default, it's resetting SharePoint Form 1. And so in our scenario, I know if the user chooses to cancel, I wanna reset SharePoint Form 2 as well. So we're simply gonna come in here and do that right alongside this one. All right, and then we're gonna move our way through the other ones as well. So in the scenario that we're on edit, um, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put 
our SharePoint Form 2 into edit mode. Uh, and also in this particular case, uh, we want to pay attention to, um, I guess, where the user starts on the particular uh, form. So in the case that they're, um, you know, clicking on new, for example, we want to make sure that not only are we setting the form to new, um, but we also want to make sure that they start on the first form rather than the content form. So as we move to our new, our on new method, um, not only are we going to new up our SharePoint form two, but we're also going to navigate to our main screen. All right, so let's work our way to the next one. So in the scenario that we're saving, we're gonna submit not only SharePoint Form 1, but also SharePoint Form 2. And then in the scenario that we're viewing, we're gonna set our state to view for SharePoint Form 2. And finally, in this scenario, I also also uh, I also want to start the user on the main form as opposed to the content form. So we're going to make sure that the user is navigated there. Like so. Okay, so now that we've done all of those things, we're ready to actually deploy this and see how it works for the end user. To do that, we're simply going to come over here to our file menu and you'll have an option to save. And then once you've saved it, you have an option to actually publish it to SharePoint. And once you do this, it will become available for all of your users who use that list. So uh, this is the point at which you wanna make sure that it's ready and mostly functional. So now that we've done that, let's actually jump over to our SharePoint list. Um, so I'm gonna actually just simply click on that list here. Um, and this will open a new tab for me. And uh, here's my list, uh, just the way it was when we left it. Uh, but now in this particular scenario, if I Go ahead and click the existing one that I have here and choose to edit it. I can see my new form um, complete with that new layout. I have my button or my icon over here on the right that flips me into that content screen showing me my content. Um, if I want to edit this content, um, it's going to put this into edit mode so I can enter more content. And now I can choose to save this. And so it has saved that content for me. The next thing uh, that we'll take a look at is, uh, let's say I'm creating a new uh, piece of content that needs to be scheduled. Um, we'll come in here and we'll pick a due date. Let's say I need it on the 24th. And in this particular case, I don't have a description yet. I don't really know what it is, uh, other than I know it's gonna be a blog post um, and I want to assign it. Um, and so right there, my description is now required. In this case, if I go try to save this, um, it's actually not gonna let me save it. It's gonna say, hey, the description is required. So that's a scenario uh, that can be valuable where you, you know, want to make sure that fields are filled in uh, maybe once a particular piece of content goes after a draft state. So in draft state, save it, add stuff as you need to, but by the time it gets to that middle or final state, you need to have certain fields. Uh, so that can be a pretty valuable uh, modification. So that's it for today's video. If you've been wrestling with those forms for lists and libraries in SharePoint Online and trying to figure out how to enable a custom scenario, um, hopefully this helps you get past that. If you've been stuck with InfoPath, wondering if there's a better way, um, this should help you get past that as well. You should be able to kill InfoPath at this point and move on to a better world. If you like this video, be sure to like or subscribe because there'll be more coming and we'll see you next time.